This is D from Simple Complex Men. So excited to be back with you again today. We're coming back with another topic, another video on watch and pray. So this is an interesting one. Um, I know you're like, why is a rapper on the screen? Well, this rapper uh, who goes by the name of Little Baby, um, I know there's many rappers, babies, you know, that. That's just kind of how it works in the, the hip hop industry. Um, but this gentleman here had uh, had opportunity on Father's Day to visit his pastor. Um, and I think it's, it's quite interesting. And I want to kind of look at the video and just talk about it a little bit, because I know a lot of times and, I, and I've been in a church and in different churches and had opportunity just to kind of watch how people interact with, with celebrities, especially from a secular standpoint. And some people know how to conduct themselves properly and others, uh, not so much. So I just want to take a look at the video and let's just kind of talk about it. You know, this is an open discussion um, just to kind of get you all's feelings and, and, and comments on, on what do you think? Do you think that the pastor handled this situation the best way? Um, I mean, what, what do you think? Well, so let's just jump right into it. If y'all don't know who this is, this is one of the sons of this church. So first the pastor, he, he introduces him. Um, he said, if, if you all don't know who he is, okay. And so now he's, 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 you know, letting everyone know who he is, you know, if he, you know, may have been away from the church for a while. Um, so just kind of introducing him, um, letting them know that and now for those who may not be, you may be watching this video and you may not uh, attend church. So I don't want to assume that. And so when they talk about sons, it's normally meaning uh, came out of, you know, uh, it's a son, not necessarily biological, of course, but just a son of the church. You know, so they grew up in here, you know, basically gave birth to them, you know, probably came in at a young age. Now they're a grown, grown adult. I call him. I pray for him. Amen. This is the number one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hip hop voice yes. in the world. Now. Now you all, you know, please, please give me your comments on this because I'm wondering, and I get it. And to be honest, I don't even think, and this, this is my opinion. I don't, I don't think, and we're going to look at the context of the church, right? So we're looking at the context of the church. Um, the church is there to accept those who, well, primarily is there to equip the saints, Secondarily, um, if when they come into the church, say they're if they're unsaved, then we should be able to. The goal is to bring them unto Christ, right? That's pretty much the primary goal, all right. To equip, and then secondarily, and I say secondarily only because um, they really should be uh, converted, and then we bring them into the church. Okay, so so you, you convert them outside the church and then bring them to the church to get equipped. So technically, unbelievers shouldn't just be sitting in there and sitting in church and sitting in there for weeks and months and months and months unsaved, you know, because it's, it's really not designed that way, although we've turned it into that type of process. And so because a lot of be believers, to be honest, don't really outreach anymore. They don't really share the gospel um, they depend on their pastor and leadership. So what they'll do, they'll say, hey, come to my church and hear my pastor. So a lot of times they forget, you know, hey, you got an unction on the inside of you. <laughs> the word, the Holy Spirit is in you. He put, it's in you. You have just as much power as the pastor has. But for some reason, a lot of times um, members tend to lean on their pastor to do the work that they should do. OK, so that's just a kind of sidebar. But what is this necessary? Is this necessary what he's doing? Yeah. 
So this is the thing. I mean, we know. Now, I don't know if you had an opportunity uh, to listen to 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 little baby uh, lyrics. Now, of course, I, I can't really listen to him because, you know, I'm a Christian. So his lyrics and, and I'm sure he's, you know, and look, I'm former rapper. Matter of fact, I still do some music uh, from a gospel standpoint. I did secular and uh, now uh, gospel. And so the thing is, so I get it. You know, I used to speak a lot differently before Christ, <laughs> you know, in my songs for those who remember. So, so I get the transitional process. So I'm not putting him out there. He's just going to church. He's just attending. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. I know he wasn't even probably expecting this. He just wanted to come to church, but this, his pastor felt like, Oh, is this is my opportunity, you know, to connect, to use him as a catalyst to bring more young people into his church. Is that the angle he's coming from? Is he positioning himself? Is he really excited for him to be there? Is he really excited or is he excited? But then there's an undercurrent of this is a great opportunity to, to draw some, some more people to our church, some younger crowd to our church because why? Because little babies here. That's my question. And, and I see this all the time. This happens plenty of times where, um, you know, those in the world who are considered celebrities, superstars come into the church and the saints don't know how to act. So give, give me a comment. Tell me what you think about it. Should, should he had, should he just let him sit there and enjoy the service or should he brought him up? Because, hey, I guess he, he's the son of the church. I'm so okay so he dancing a little bit so what is that about i don't know is that he's supposed to be able to show what he's he's cool he he he's in the know um you know what, what is that like what was the purpose of that I'm proud of him because i know where he came from yeah. this dude is amazing i'm proud of him because I know where he came from. This dude is amazing. So, yeah, so he knows him, right? So he knows where he came from. He knows he's very talented and all that good stuff. But the question is, is it appropriate in reference to the church, what the church teaches and what he's rapping are, are opposed, opposed to each other, right? So there are two different things going on, two different messages. You know, now he he does, like most <laughs> secular rappers, uh, have some, you know, uh, gospel sounding or some spiritual lyrics um, that they talk about. But by and large, 90 percent of the album is is really, uh, you know, uh, not Christian. OK, and they're saying a lot of ungodly, unrighteous things in it. OK, that would go against our belief system. So is it is it appropriate keeping that in mind for a pastor to uplift him in this manner and to say some of the things he's saying? Yeah, yeah just, you, just, we we gonna uh, yeah we gonna do something with these kids. See, we we we're gonna do something with these kids. Is he again? Like I was saying. Is he positioning himself? Is there a, a um, undercurrent? Is there a hidden motive going on here? It, it feels like that. You know, am I wrong? Am I just seeing things here the way they're unfolding? It feels like they're a hidden motive and he's kind of using him as a prop to be able to work out his agenda. This is an amazing guy. Give me a microphone. I just want you to say something. Give me a microphone. You want my microphone? Just give me a microphone. Give me a microphone. I just want him to say something. So I just want to put more emphasis on who he is from a worldly perspective. Okay. So you got this brother, you need to really be converting to Christ and bringing him out of the world. But now you're using him as a prop. It looks like the pastor's using him as a prop. Y'all tell me, I don't know. It just looked like this is what I'm seeing right now. He's getting a mic. He's doing a little dancing. He's doing all these antics. You know, he's not doing it for anybody else. Why is he doing it for him? 
Is this something he do, does every Sunday? Do he, does he just pick up pick a, a young person out of his uh, out of the church and bring them up and, and go through this whole process? No, I'm sure he doesn't. But because this individual has a name, he's worldwide. He's one of the top artists in the, in the world. He wants to use him to position him because he has a hidden agenda. Now, even if that hidden agenda is to uh, try to, to bring more people to his church and some can say, oh, that's great though. They're bringing people into this church, but should we be using an individual that's not fully converted, okay? Meaning he's fully hasn't changed. Obviously he's going to probably leave more than likely. Now, prayerfully he didn't. Prayerfully uh, something he heard in the sermon may have touched his heart and maybe he's not going to go back and do some of the things after the service is over. But nine out of 10 times, they go to the service, get used as a prop, and then they end up back in the same state that they were in before they came to the service. So that's that's my concern. What do you all think about that? Move that microphone. I, I went to his concert. <laughs> He went to his concert. <laughs> so we have a pastor here saying that he went to little baby's concert. Now, what is he going to learn from that? What could he possibly glorify? How could he glorify God with the lyrics that he sang? They're they're contradictory to each other. What what is he? What is he? But he's look, he's smiling. And see, that's why I said a lot of times, and this is the church, you know, this is our fault that we allowed ourselves to get to, to this point where our mind is seared. Our mind is, we don't, we're not, um, the discernment is not there anymore. Uh, the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is not there anymore because we should be able to catch these things. But now we're so comfortable. We can operate in and out of the world any moment. One moment we're in the world, we're doing our thing. Then we back in the pulpit on Sunday, Saturday, we're in the world. Then Sunday we're, we were teaching and doing other things and singing in the choir. You know, we're, we've become very comfortable between toggling between the world. But we know that even in the, you know, with the Egyptians and the children of Israel, that was one of the biggest issues God had with them. They were going one side of the river. <laughs> you know, they want to stay in the world, try to cross back over to Jordan. And now they're back on another side, you know, want to be with God you know, just back and forth relationship. And God was like, look, I'm tired of holding your hand. I had to hold your hand in the wilderness. You know, God shouldn't have to be, have on-site supervision with us. At some point, we should get to a place of maturity where we, we can sense the Holy Spirit. We know the word and we can conduct ourselves properly. But I believe they, I believe this brother is being used. He has a, he looks like he, he's there probably out of the sincerity of his heart to have, you know, to enjoy the service. You know, he probably wasn't even expecting any of this and probably didn't want any of it. He just wanted to come, you know, back to his home church. But this pastor took an opportunity to, to utilize him in an improper way. That's just my belief. <laughs> he took his shirt off. I almost want to take my shirt off too. He took his shirt off. Now the pastor wanted to take his shirt off. How y'all doing today? How you doing? Hey. First and foremost, I want to wish y'all the fathers a happy Father's Day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't got too much to say. Pastor want me to say something. I don't got nothing to say. I just hope everybody doing good and keeping God first. I feel like, like I got say. <laughs> I ain't got no more. <laughs> I'm just grateful, 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 grateful that he came by yes. on his time. He could be London, yes. Africa, anywhere, yes. Yes. but he right. came home. Yes. That's a blessing. Yes. I yes. I'm gone. Y'all take over. I love y'all. I'm gone. So he rolls out. He said, he said, I'm out of here. You know, he's feeling real cool. He's feeling real hip right now. He's like, look, you know, I had a little baby come in here, do his thing, showed him around a little bit, you know, put him in front of everyone. This is great. Y'all did my thing, dropped the mic. I'm out. You know, so they they exit exiting stage left. So I don't know, y'all. What do what do you? 
what do y'all think about this? I mean, was this brother used as a prop? You know, to to try to draw more people into that pastor's church? I mean, I get, again, you know, he grew up there, apparently was a son of the church. I get it. But is it necessary and is it appropriate to to take an, a, a I don't want to necessarily, necessarily say I'm believer because, I mean, he could be, uh, he could believe in Christ and things like that. And some of us have and, and, and just didn't, wasn't living the lifestyle, you know, what we would call converted. And so that that happens, but we do have to because we're denying. God told us if we we if we have to deny ourselves, we have to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Okay, and so does this even does this help? What 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 does little baby leave with? Like his impression after that happens, and this will happen to a lot of celebrities. I always wonder, do they feel, does that make them feel like it's okay? Like their lifestyle is okay? Because technically, if their lifestyle is contrary to scripture, we're supposed to be helping them get out of that. In other words, all the plaques and trophies and all of that stuff would be on Satan's side. You know, so we would be trying to say, hey, leave that alone, come over here, right? But a lot of times, a lot of these pastors are so happy and excited to get a celebrity in there you know, they put on all these antics and try to get them in front of that mic, you know, so so they can have a moment and use that moment to be able to pull other people into their church. They just want to members. They're not looking for necessarily salvation. They're looking for members. This is a membership. This is a corporation. This is a business. You know, we, we need to bring, get people, customers in the door, you know, and that's just the reality. That's exactly what's going on in a lot of these churches. And it, and it has to be stopped. It's ridiculous. And, and they know, they know what they're doing. You know, if they really full of the Holy Spirit for real, and if they not, then we already know. But if they are, the Holy Spirit should convict them and let them know this is absolutely inappropriate. Do we, who, do we see anybody doing it? The only time somebody was really brought forth and we can look at Paul when Paul, this is, thank you, Lord. When Paul changed, we, Paul, remember Paul was Saul before he was Paul, right? Saul was killing Christians and doing all types of things, right? But eventually, I believe it was, but Barnabas brought Paul, had to bring Paul, Saul <laughs> to, to the people, to the Christians that let them know, no, this brother's changed. He's different because they still thought they were still afraid of him because they thought he was Saul, but they didn't know that he had an experience with Jesus Christ on Damascus Road. And so when so Barnabas, somebody had to give him an accreditation, so to speak, and, and speak on his behalf to say, no, 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 no. He's not Saul. He's not murdering <laughs> the guns. The nah, Everything's put away. He's not chopping off no Christian heads. Nobody's being fit, fed to the lions. Nothing. He's, he, he had an experience with Christ. All right. So I'm bringing him this converted person into the fold so he can get to know the Christian community. He can get to know um, and, and be, be able to fellowship now. And so now God is going to eventually use this brother, the pen 13 letters of the new Testament. They didn't know that at that time, you know, now that's a moment where, where, uh, but this individual was, was converted. He accepted Christ and was brought forth in that manner before people. Now, this is not the same scenario. So I don't know, are there scenarios where you were, where they were bringing unbelievers or those who weren't fully converted up like that and putting them up in, in, in the limelight in certain positions like that? You know, and so that's 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 what we should be doing, you know, as Christians. We got to find out, like, where is this in the Bible? Did, did, did Jesus do this? Did the disciples do this? You know, who did, did we see anybody, you know, function like this in, in the New Testament? You know, even in the old. So I think, you know, I just want to let you all um, just comment on it. Tell me your opinions. 
Tell me what you think. Maybe you have a whole another perspective on it. You know, maybe I'm looking at this thing all wrong, but I wanted to talk about it. Um, I know a lot of people was talking about it. And like I said, you know, if it's church related, especially uh, Simple Complex Men is definitely going to speak on it. Um, you know, like, of course, subscribe, share. Um, again, this is D from Simple Complex Men. And I want to say real quick, Brother Will, we're still together. So I don't want to think I know some of you all haven't seen him in a while. He's enjoying his vacation uh, with his family. So he's going to be back soon. Um, he's going to give us a nice word. So I'm going to be excited about that. So stay tuned for that. But again, this is D from Simple Complex Men. This is Watch and Pray. We'll see you again on the next video.